Rejoice with me, Jesus says. Rejoice with me. Because I found my lost sheep. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Father. Father. Why do we have the Feast of the Second Heart? And why have you ever considered why do we have the Second Heart of Jesus as our patron? This is not a coincidence or some kind of accident. This is divine providence that we have in it. As his heart, as our patron. And the church or the parish Second Heart Church here, we, we are here in Richmond, the seat of Fort Man County. It is quite uh, fascinating to, to consider, to reflect that church, our church, the heart of this city, the heart of Fort Man County. And it is so, it's an honor, a privilege, that we have the mission. Our mission is this. We are faith, uh, faith-filled people, okay, based on the compassionate heart of Jesus, and we gladly welcome all. Isn't that our mission? Gladly welcome all. And that's our mission. And we have the compassionate heart of Jesus. Why, why, the, why does the Lord choose us and call us to be no, in his heart, sacred heart. One thing I, I, I realize as I uh, observe around us in our culture here, uh, and around the world right now, we use our mind a lot, and we use our body a lot. You send your, your, your children to school, to college, to university, we're trained in the mind to solve problems, plan and everything else, right? and also you know, to destroy the body. You, know, you send a lot of you know, your children to uh, universities. There's no teaching how, of how to be human being. The body trained to be athlete and sport and all that is one of the religion. The mind is another religion. You know, you, we study very hard the mind and the body. And we, serve, we use the mind to serve our body, pleasure and all those things, avoid pain and all those things. And the whole culture is based on the mind and the body. Mind-body relationship. But how about the heart? How about the heart? Where do you get that education or formation of the heart? Here in the church. What is the heart all about? And we see the second heart of Jesus, we think about the physical heart, but in Jesus, there are threefold hearts. That according to St. John Jude, threefold. First, Jesus has that God divinity, we call it the divine heart. The second, the spiritual heart. His soul. And then the third one, the physical heart, which we see that his heart was pierced open for us. And we see the birth of the Catholic Church and all the sacraments there. So three fold heart of Jesus. And this is a teaching of the church for a long time. And I, I hope that you know this already. You know this, right? Three fold heart of Jesus. The divine, of course, the divinity of Jesus Christ. And he is the second person of, of the Holy Trinity. And what is this divine heart? Simply, Deus Caritas Est. God is mercy. God is charity. God is love. We use our mind a lot. And we think we are big and we are at the top of the world. Yeah, but that is called pride. The Lord is not just about the mind. Yes, worship God with all your mind. Study God in order to be like God. We are built or we are created in this image. Now we look, well, we are, we are the image of God, but we are not like Him yet until we have this heart, the heart of love, of compassion, mercy. The divine heart is that way. The greatest attribute of God is mercy, love to the extreme. And then you have the spiritual, that's where the Holy Spirit is. Now love, according to St. Paul, is something almost like a liquid you can pour out into. The love of God has poured out into our heart. And he calls it the Holy Spirit. The love of God is the Holy Spirit into our heart. So in Jesus' heart, we see there is a kind of a, um, a separation, but a united separation. Okay? One part of him is with the Father, completely with the Father, and the other part of Jesus' heart is with us humanity. So the connection between humanity and divinity in Jesus is the Holy Spirit. And because of his humanity, the human nature, we can share in 
the divine nature of God, the Holy Spirit. Now, the third one is the physical heart of Jesus, the pierced heart, the physical. He feels pain. I heard somebody uh, during one of those hu uh, funeral service um, saying, I think that uh, that lady uh, who was uh, a Catholic and still a Catholic still, but she said something when she shared during this funeral service, I am very spiritual but not religious. You heard that? I'm spiritual but uh, not religious. What does that mean? Spiritual but not religious. Have you ever considered that? Uh, really, really uh, gare, binding. Religious means you are bound to God, being religious. But spiritual, we can be very spiritual. We can do a lot of good stuff, you know, do good deeds. But it means we are moral. I do good, but I don't avoid evil. I do a lot of good, but I'm not leading a moral life. The moral life can be taught, can only be taught here, in the church, not in the world. This is how we are different. Morally good is not good in general. And you can be you know, spiritual, a lot of people are spiritual, but not moral. And when we talk about morality, we talk about the conscience. Oh, I follow my heart, yes. But what kind of heart that is? It has to be the heart of Jesus Christ, the moral heart, goodness. Well, he feels the pain because of sins. And I said this before, what does sin do to us? Sins make us stupid, stubborn, and sterile. And we avoid, you know, looking or confronting the reality of sin. And we don't talk about it. And for instance, about abortion, fornication, or homosexuality, we, we avoid it. Oh, those, you don't talk about it because you talk about it, you're in trouble. You're discriminating. You're into, intolerant. No, no. We're, we're talking about protecting our heart. The mind can die. You know, you, you understand. I wonder if you saw this, uh, this uh, 60 minutes uh, program regarding the, the, the life of uh, our beloved uh, president, uh, Ronald Reagan. When he was, you know, he retired and he had Alzheimer, couldn't remember anything, and, and 60 minutes, uh, the reporter came and uh, interviewed and his wife, Nancy, and uh, interviewed him. And during the interview, he saw uh, Mr. Reagan. He, he was holding to this toy. Somebody gave him this toy, and the toy was a kind of a small little white house. Huh? White house. He kept holding on to it. And... Uh, People said, you know, leave it, leave it. And, and people tried to take it away from him. He, he could not remember anything. So his wife, Nancy, tried to, like, you know, take his finger out. And, and he kept holding on to the White House, the toy. And Nancy asked him, why do you keep holding to this toy? And he said, I do not know what it is. You don't know what it is? No, I don't know. But I think it has something to do with this one. <laughs> he doesn't remember. <clears throat> but his heart is still there. His heart is still there. There's a love for the country, for that, that place, but he doesn't remember. You see, the mind is no longer there, but the heart is still there. We need to be educated and be formed and informed, transform uh, the heart into the heart of God with moral, the conscience, educate our our children with the moral conscience, not just intellectual. Yes, we do that. And with the body, training the body, like Father Tom, you know, fighting Kung Fu, all those things. <laughs> but without the heart, what's the point? And then you, you can fight all the all you like. And suddenly it just blacked out and it just <laughs> brother, brother, Michael, where are you? <laughs> all the Kung Fu doesn't do help. You have to have the heart. <laughs> But the heart is easy. The body has to train, the mind has to train, but the heart is so easy. The heart wants to serve. I tell you, well, I have so many stories about, about service. You cannot fail when you serve. And the heart of God is always serving us. It's not just giving us food and 5,000 men in the deserted place and with bread and fish. Not just that. He served us with His life. 
you see in his heart. It is only because we do not love enough, and this is why we have this sacred heart piece, the sacred heart, to remind us we need to love. This is a purpose and a life mission for us all. And you cannot, you cannot serve without love, and you cannot love without service. I, I'll tell you this story. Um, when I was a uh, director of uh, our communication center in California, and uh, uh, as a founder of this television program, we have every every program half an hour or an hour. It takes us at least two weeks to uh, produce one hour of TV. Okay, for the radio, we could do it, you know, uh, in one hour. But one program for the television episode, uh, one hour, uh, fifteen minutes. It takes us two weeks with about thirty people to produce it. And one of our uh, volunteers. Uh, uh, I found out that he was um, the grandson, uh, the first grandson of our last emperor. You know, Vietnam used to have king and the emperor. And it, it, he is the kind of a direct descent of this last emperor. He, he's, uh, he volunteered, he's American, all American. And he got married to uh, this uh, wonderful uh, lady, Helen, an all American. They lived together, they had no children. But I look at her and I see how they love each other, especially her, Helen. Well, she was only uh, about 40 years old, but she contracted cancer. She had cancer. And I, I saw her, she came and helped her husband. Every night, we stay very late and do the television program. And she was struggling for years, like uh, three, four years with cancer. Went through chemotherapy and radiation therapy and surgical, but no, nothing helped. But what happened was that uh, uh, as uh, this man died, he told me that uh, his wife was on her deathbed. And when cancer started to affect her, and her whole body turned dark, okay? really dark, couldn't see anything. He prayed and he prayed, he called uh, for help, and the priest came, the priest came, and uh, anointed her and gave her communion. After, you know, before she died, she said something. The last word was that, I love you. But that love did not stop there after her death. <coughs> after she died, her whole body turned really bright, I mean, uh, the, her husband told me that she suddenly becomes so beautiful, no more cancer after she died. But her love for, for her husband is so tremendous. I learned so much from this, this uh, lady, Helen. After about three months, on Christmas Day, Dai received, now his name is, you know, the husband is uh, Dai, he received a gift, a Christmas gift from his wife. He opened it. And Helen said, I know you'll be alone this Christmas, but here is my love for you. Still there. And he opened it. It was a Bible. The Word of God on fire. That is my love for you. He was a fallen away Catholic. And then on the, the 14th of uh, February, the same thing. After almost six months, after she died, you know, the husband received another gift from his wife. Amazing. I know you're even more lonely now. So this is a gift for you on our Valentine. Have you learned love trans transcends all time, space, and race and everything. Love lies in the heart of God, <coughs> in our heart. And this is why we celebrate, we celebrate love today. And as, as a community, second heart community, we will not be feeding ourselves anymore with ice cream. We will, we will out there, I'm bringing Red Cross and, uh, to help us and we will serve those volunteers. Welcome them, be who we are, be who we claim to be. We gladly welcome all of you and show our love. This is the time to show our love to those who are in need. Amen. Amen. Amen.